I noticed Taylor Lorenz. Have you came across Taylor Lorenz? But she's a, a like a kind of relatively progressive left journalist, sometimes countering disinformation and stuff. She's very much in the culture war in America and very much on the progressive mainstream okay. left side of it, fighting against disinformation and whatnot and feuding. The thing that she was quite well known for recently was she did a interview with the libs of TikTok woman and they were both like kind of avatars of the, the opposing sides. Yeah. She went to an outdoor meeting with a mask and the other one had like Taylor Lorenz printed on her t-shirt and stuff and i think taylor lorenz came across much better in that but they were sort of avatars of the you know the two sides of the culture war in america but i i mentioned her because she was tweeting out twitch streamers are providing real-time unfiltered coverage of student protests in a way that challenges mainstream media narratives and she thanks a bunch of them including frogan and hassan nahan who is hassan and his editor for speaking to her about the piece right so basically presenting that Twitch streamers are providing, you know, insights that the mainstream media can't handle. And I just have to say that, that two things. One, I heard Hassan's interview technique. You know, recently we were told Hassan is not an interviewer. So it was unfair to look at him interviewing the Houthi mm. sympathetic figure that he interviewed on stream. But now he's been presented as somebody that can conduct interviews and give you insights that the mainstream media will not, which is what he framed that interview with the Houthi Paradise. So color me skeptical <laughs> that, that, that that is, he's adding much value. But the other thing, second thing is, I heard this narrative before, back when Tim Pool was being lauded as the future of journalism during the Occupy Wall Street movement, because he was live streaming from the Occupy Wall Street movement. And he went on to work for Vice, producing things like kind of heralded as he's using technology. He's, you know, breaking through the, the walls. And look where Tim Pool is now. And I, I just wanted to say, like, maybe it actually is good for all the imperfections that mainstream journalism has, that they they do, to some extent, try to distinguish between activism and journalism. Whereas, you know, the Twitch streamers and whatnot, they have no such concerns and they are very much focused on ideology. So I'm sure you can get things that you won't hear in mainstream. And maybe the protesters are more willing to speak to them because, uh, you know, people that they see are more ideologically aligned. So I'm not saying no value to it, but I'm just saying herald in it as the, you know, the mm. next stage of, of journalism that breaks the mainstream paradigm. I just caution. I want caution. Temple should be a cautionary tale about yeah. that. yeah. It can be a bit annoying, isn't it, when, I guess, political blind spots are so obvious. Like, people on one side of politics could see it clearly, see it obviously for what it is, and we'll, and we'll call it out when, when it's a, a right-wing influencer that's doing this yeah. kind of, you know, ideologically driven, activist-style, you know, reporting. But, you know, if it's in favour of a good cause, i.e. a left-wing one, then it's, it's, it's exciting and, and, and edgy <laughs> and cool. So, like... Yeah, just be consistent. Yeah, go into, you know, like a Trump rally or whatever and be the sympathetic journalist and presenting the people in a positive light and, and trying to counter narratives that they're mindless, you know, like that that is often presented as bad, right? That's bad because you're not representing the reason that people are getting criticized or whatever. And I'm not saying there's there's an exact parallel there, but I'm just saying exactly what you said, which like you have to be wary when people are ideologically aligned interviewing people because they're unlikely to, you know, raise the counter perspective in a challenging way or whatever, just by the nature of their sympathy. So just factor that in. So that that's all. I'm just, just saying beware, especially in the case of Hassan's interview techniques, which I we, we did see upfront and personal on his live stream. So, yeah. Anyway, it, it is a very dispiriting time in, in the field of media and journalism because, you know, especially, you know, politically hot topics seem to so quickly become dominated by absolute, you know, very filtered, very partisan reporting um, across the spectrum of, you know, respectable but kind of biased mainstream type outlets to, you know, independent actors like Hassan or 
Tim Pool or whoever who is doing some version of reporting. And, you know, that's where people are getting their news. They're getting the news from social media I and know. links to various things. And uh, like I know or the Destiny. idea of like per- or Destiny, any of them, right? Yeah, like, just to be clear, <laughs> like that yeah. shouldn't be your news source. They shouldn't be. No, and look, I, I I know that the sort of ideal of some perfectly neutral, you know, unbiased news sources is, is 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 a unicorn, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't be something you should aspire to and seek My, out and yeah. respect and try to attempt to approximate. Yeah, this is true. 